Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepak Shikurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Friday, the 14th of February. India remembers Pulwama terror attack martyrs on its anniversary. Preparations underway ahead of US President Trump's first India visit. U.S. Taliban negotiates seven-day reduction in violence, says Pentagon Chief Esper. And now for all the details. India on Friday paid tributes to the 40 paramilitary personnel who lost their lives in the Pulwama terror attack on February 14th last year. A suicide bomber of Pakistan-based Jaish-e Mohammed terror group had rammed a vehicle carrying explosives into the paramilitary convoy, killing 40 personnel. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday paid tributes to 40 paramilitary personnel killed in the Pulwama terror attack in India's Jammu and Kashmir last year and said India will never forget their martyrdom. PM Modi in a tweet described the Central Reserve Police Force or CRPF martyrs as exceptional individuals who devoted their lives by serving the country. Meanwhile, the CRPF on the death anniversary of their personnel inaugurated a memorial at its Lethpura camp in Pulwama district. Names of all the 40 personnels along with their pictures are part of the memorial. In the last few months, the main conspirators and the main terrorists were neutralized. After that, some people were arrested who helped them from outside as OGW. Those who had given this situation, had given this situation. उनका हिसाब किया जा चुका है। On February 14, 2019, a suicide bomber of Pakistan-based Jaisy Mohammed or JEM terror group rammed a vehicle carrying explosives into a CRPF convoy in Pulwama, killing 40 personnel. Days after the attack, the Indian Air Force on February 26 carried out multiple aerial strikes at JEM terror camps in Pakistan's Balakot killing a large number of terrorists and destroying their infrastructure. Tensions flared up between India and Pakistan after the counter-attacks. Portugal's President Marcelo Rebelo de Sousa on Friday met his Indian counterpart Ram Nath Kovind and Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi in New Delhi to boost bilateral ties. After holding delegation-level talks, both the sides agreed to enhance cooperation in trade, defence and maritime sectors. Portugal's President Marcelo Rebelo de Souza was accorded a ceremonial welcome in New Delhi on Friday as he began his four-day official visit aimed at strengthening bilateral ties with India. Souza was received by his Indian counterpart Ram Nath Kovind upon his arrival at the presidential palace in New Delhi, where he also inspected a guard of honour. The Portuguese leader arrived in India on Thursday night for his first state visit to India. The last visit by a Portuguese president to India was in 2007. For peace in the world, for sustainable development, for younger generations, for international law and human rights, but also bilaterally, we're going to improve our cooperation economically, technologically, scientifically, culturally. The Portuguese president later met Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi in New Delhi and held delegation-level talks exploring ways to deepen bilateral ties in a range of areas, including trade and investment. After the meeting, the two leaders witnessed exchanging of several agreements, including on development of a national maritime heritage complex in India's Gujarat, cooperation in maritime and ports, and promotion of industry and internal trade among the two countries. The Portuguese president also paid tributes at Raj Ghat, the memorial of India's iconic freedom fighter Mahatma Gandhi in the Indian capital. 
He will also travel to western Maharashtra and Goa provinces during his visit, which will conclude on Sunday. Preparations are underway in Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's home province, Gujarat, where U.S. President Donald Trump will make his first stop during his two-day state visit this month. President Trump is expected to attend a special event organized in his honor and the workplace of the country's iconic freedom fighter, Mahatma Gandhi, in Gujarat. Authorities in India are pulling out all the stops to welcome U.S. President Donald Trump and his wife, Melania Trump, for a two-day state visit starting from February 24th. Trump is expected to attend an event dubbed Kem Cho Trump, meaning How Are You Trump, at the stadium in western Gujarat's Ahmedabad city, along the lines of the Howdy Modi extravaganza he hosted for Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi in Houston last year. एक लाख दस हजार से ज्यादा लोग आने की संभावना है और उससे भी ज्यादा आएंगे तो भी उनकी बैठने की व्यवस्था कर दी गई है मीन वेल प्रेपरेशन आर ऑल्सो अंडर वे एट साबरमती आश्रम द हर्मिटेज ऑफ इंडिया आइकॉनिक फ्रीडम फाइटर महात्मा गांधी वेर प्रेजिडेंट ट्रम्प विल मेक इज फर्स्ट स्टॉप ऑन फेब्रवरी ट्वेंटी फोर सिक्योरिटी हैज ऑल्सो बीन टाइटन इन द एरिया फॉर ट्रम्प ग्रांड वेलकम हमको बहुत ही आनंद है कि डोनाल्ड ट्रम्प जी भी यहाँ पधार रहे हैं और उनका अच्छे से स्वागत भी करेंगे आंटी पहनाकर सूतर की आंटी जो हम खुद बनाते हैं और यहाँ पर उनका अच्छे से उनका प्रार्थना वगैरह भी हम यहाँ करेंगे जो डोनाल्ड ट्रम्प जी जो सर्वधर्म प्रार्थना भी सुनेंगे डोनाल्ड ट्रम्प इज शेड्यूल टू मेक इज फर्स्ट विजिट एज यू एस प्रेजिडेंट टू इंडिया एज अ टू कंट्रीज है रीच अ लिमिटेड ट्रेड पैक विद लोअर टेरिस But talks have run into problems over issues with data privacy and e-commerce controls. Families of students killed during the 2014 Army public school terror attack in Peshawar have approached the Chief Justice of Pakistan seeking answers over the escape of Ehsanullah Ehsan from a jail in the country. Ehsan, former spokesperson and top leader of the Harikat Taliban Pakistan was responsible for the gruesome attack that killed 149 people including students. Families of the students killed during the 2014 Army public school terror attack in Peshawar on Thursday approached Chief Justice of Pakistan Gulzar Ahmed seeking answers over the escape of Ehsanullah Ehsan, former spokesperson and top leader of Tehreek-e-Taliban Pakistan from a jail in the country. In the application, the 15 families have questioned how Ehsan was able to leave Pakistan upon his escape from the prison. and said that the state failed in bringing him to justice Ehsan has disclosed that on January 11 he had managed to escape from the custody of the Pakistani security authorities Ehsan was involved in one of the most gruesome attacks on Pakistani children when suicide attackers on December 16 2014 entered school shooting indiscriminately killing 149 people including 132 students Moving on political activist Shaukat Ali Kashmiri recently highlighted Pakistan's nefarious designs to illegally merge Pakistan administered Kashmir and Gilgit Baltistan into its provinces he expressed concerns that the move will lead to further persecution of people of both the illegally occupied regions Political activist Shaukat Ali Kashmiri has brought out how Pakistan is shaping its nefarious designs to merge Pakistan administered Kashmir and Gilgit Baltistan into its provinces while keeping residents of both the illegally occupied territories deprived of any constitutional rights. He said Pakistan is planning to subsume parts of both the regions into Punjab province and Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and appoint commissioners to rule them. He also highlighted Raja Farooq Haider Khan's statement in December last year in which he said that the Pakistani administration has given him message that there will be no prime minister of Pakistan administered Kashmir after him indicating Islamabad's nefarious plans. Kyunki Azad Kashmir ka jo kirdar hai wo ek tafeeli ka inhone banaya hai gushta 70 saalon se Azad Kashmir ke siyasi samaji aur maashi huquq jo hai wo compromised hain. और कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल पावर्स जो है वो लोगों को हासिल नहीं है और ना ही आज़ाद कश्मीर की हुकूमत के पास किसी किस्म के कोई कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल पावर्स हैं अगर तो इसलिए ये तो बात वाज है कि पाकिस्तान जो है वो 
آزاد کشمیر یا گلگت بلتستان کو ایک صوبائی حیثیت دینے کے لیے بھی تیار نہیں ہے Activists blame the stooge rulers in both the illegally occupied regions, work at Pakistan's behest and help Islamabad fill its treasuries through economic depredations and exploitation of natural resources. Although Pakistan has no legal claim over the territories, the administrators have persecuted the locals through military rule and at times forced legislations that left them deprived of any human rights. U.S. Defense Secretary Mark Esper on Thursday announced that President Donald Trump's administration and the Taliban had negotiated a seven-day reduction in violence proposal in Afghanistan. He made the remark on the final day of the NATO Defense Minister's meeting in Brussels. U.S. Defense Secretary Mark Esper said on Thursday that the United States and the Taliban had negotiated a proposal for a seven-day reduction in violence. Speaking after a meeting of the NATO-led Resolute Support Mission for Afghanistan in Brussels, Esper told reporters the deal was conditions-based and warned there would be a continuous evaluation process. The announcement came after Afghan President Ashraf Ghani earlier this week said there had been a possible breakthrough in U.S.-Taliban talks in Qatar. The United States and the Taliban have negotiated a proposal for a seven-day reduction in violence. I'm here today consulting with allies about this proposal, and we've had a series of productive bilateral and collective meetings about the path forward. Peace talks had been deadlocked in part over a U.S. demand that the insurgents agree to sharply reduce violence as part of any American troop withdrawal accord. Meanwhile, Afghan Acting Minister of Defense Asadullah Khalid met with Esper, and the U.S. Defense Secretary reaffirmed Washington's enduring support to the Afghan security forces the Afghan Ministry of Defense said in a statement. Over a dozen people were killed in central Afghanistan in a series of avalanches on Wednesday and Thursday. This year, winter in the country has been harsh with heavy snowfall avalanches and flash flooding claiming several lives. Over a dozen people were killed after a series of avalanches struck central Afghanistan on Wednesday and Thursday. According to an official from Ministry for Disaster Management, seven people remain missing following the avalanches in central parts of the country since Thursday, media reports said. Search and rescue teams have been working to find the missing and help the victims, according to the latest reports. This winter in Afghanistan has been harsh with heavy snowfall, avalanches and flash flooding. Scores have also been injured and 2,400 houses have been swept away in flash floods since the start of the season. The recent deaths have brought the death toll from avalanches and flash floods in Afghanistan in the past two months to more than 70. In a bid to control the fires on boats and ships in the deep, a firefighting and rescue boat was launched into sea earlier this week in Sri Lanka. The ultra-modern firefighting and rescue boat can reach 35 nautical miles per hour. A firefighting and rescue boat to control the fires on boats and ships in the deep was launched into the sea earlier this week in Sri Lankan capital, Colombo. The boat's trial run was overseen by commander of the Sri Lankan Navy, Vice Admiral P.L. De Silva. This 17.91 meter long and 6.91 meter wide ultra modern firefighting and rescue boat, completely made domestically by Solus Marine Lanka Private Limited, can reach 35 nautical miles per hour. The boat is equipped with two high pressure form proportioning systems and other advanced electronic devices. Many believe that the watercraft could raise export revenue, which would boost the Sri Lankan economy. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. India remembers Pulwama terror attack martyrs on its anniversary. Preparations underway ahead of US President Trump's first India visit. And U.S. Taliban negotiates seven-day reduction in violence, says Pentagon Chief Esper. 
Now our viewers can watch the show on SaudiAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianNewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night.